To replace iron gears with wear-resistant bronze material, craftsmen in Pakistan used molten bronze for casting. Although they didn't have modern machining equipment, the finished product still achieved high precision at a small workshop in the Peshawar area. The craftsmen first used liquefied gas to heat the molding sand. The main purpose was to mix it with waste engine oil, so the sand would have enough adhesion, preventing cracks or collapse after shaping. To restore the damaged gear, adhesive tape was applied to the edges to avoid deformation that could affect the mold. Then, a layer of release sand was sprinkled onto the surface so that when packed into the mold, the sand wouldn't stick to the gear surface. Next, the craftsmen used gravity to compress and compact the sand. This prevented any internal gaps. He carefully leveled the surface, completing half of the mold. In cases where internal casting for alignment was needed, that part had to be separated from the mold. However, the accuracy of the gear teeth was not yet suitable for use. To allow room for later machining, the craftsmen reshaped the mold into a perfect circle, effectively removing the gear teeth from the mold. Using an iron plate, the craftsmen carefully adjusted the shape, then high temperatures were applied to the inner mold surface to fix it in place. While waiting for the mold to harden, the furnace had to be stabilized to prevent its position from shifting due to heat. Small-scale workshops typically use heavy oil as fuel, which not only heats quickly but also benefits from airflow to maintain stable temperatures. Since they didn't recycle scrap bronze, the bronze-covered turbine had to be reheated in the furnace. However, directly melting it would not work due to the mixed metal layers. To separate the bronze from the steel in the turbine, the craftsmen first preheated it using the furnace's heat. This process reduced the overall hardness of the turbine. After heating the turbine for half an hour, the craftsmen gently tapped the bronze casing with a hammer, allowing it to be separated from the steel core. Once completed, the bronze blocks were thrown into the furnace and melted into liquid bronze for casting. With the fan operating at full capacity, the bronze quickly melted. The molten bronze was then poured into the preformed mold. After cooling, for five hours, surface sand, if left uncleaned, could interfere with machining. The craftsmen had to thoroughly clean it to prevent sand from getting stuck in the gaps of the lathe chuck. To ensure the restored gear matched the exact specifications, the craftsmen used calipers to measure the inner diameter. This avoided errors, odd that could render the bronze gear unusable once verified surface trimming was performed. Although this reduced the thickness of the casting, unsealed molds typically produce thicker results than the original iron gear. Thanks to the craftsmen's skill, the surface finish was significantly improved. However, the inner surface remained quite rough, so a hole boring tool was used to remove irregularities. This not only brought the inner diameter to spec, but also flattened and smoothed the surface. After removing all all sharp edges from the casting, and without access to specialized gear tools, the craftsmen used a drill bit to create holes at marked positions around the gear. These holes indicated the spacing of the gear teeth. Once all 15 holes were drilled along the gear's edge, the gear teeth still did not meet functional standards. To restore them to the same shape as the original iron gear, the craftsmen used a grinding stone to carefully shape each drilled section. This process recreated the contours of the teeth and restored the gear's original form. And just like that, a gear cast from molten bronze was completed. What do you think of the craftsmanship of these Pakistani artisans?